Guys, welcome back. It's great to be back. 2021 has been a totally different year for Ashley and I, obviously for having our sweet baby girl, Sadie. Um, she has been an absolute blessing in every way, but it has made it a little bit hard for me to have the extra time to do some YouTubing. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean that we haven't been doing anything with the truck at all. Um, as you can see from the title of the video, um, kind of some big things happening here. I went ahead and tried to go ahead and put some 65% over SAC injectors in the truck from Lincoln Diesel. Uh, about a month and a half ago or so, kind of made that decision and started that process. Um, First install went really, really well. Got everything out, it was a learning experience for me. I'd never done it before, got the new ones in. Truck ran great for a couple days and that's kind of when all the issues started. So I got the injector job done. I went ahead and had it retuned, ran the truck for a couple days. It was running really well, it was just in love with it. Tons of power, super responsive and the truck was just running really great. Um, and then started having some issues. So one night I was coming home from a haircut, got into the throttle just a little bit off of a stoplight and the, as I got out of the throttle, this truck just started chugging really hard, blowing tons of white smoke uh, and started having just a ton of fuel knock to the point where I thought that I had actually broken the crankshaft, uh, crankshaft, excuse me, just really freaking out, wasn't sure what was going on, got it limped home, I was really close to home um, and just really started going through diagnostics, working with Lincoln Diesel. So I pulled all the glow plugs and checked to make sure it wasn't spitting coolant or fuel out of them. Everything looked okay there for the most part that I could tell. Um, checked for any kind of excess blow by, anything like that. Everything looked great. Um, the fuel knock kind of had gone away just from, you know, just by idling it. Um, so didn't think it was the crank at that point. Definitely checked to make sure the crank didn't have any movement. So it seems like the bottom end was perfectly fine. And so everything was really disappointing at the fact that there could have been a solenoid on one of the injectors was stuck and it was just basically overloading one of the cylinders with fuel. I thought it was coming out of the back driver's side. Wasn't really sure. You can't really totally tell just from, you know, from listening. Uh, but that's what it seemed like to me. So I went ahead and pulled the injectors back out and had them sent back out to Lincoln Diesel. Uh, they went ahead and tested them and sure enough, number eight, the far back on the, on the driver's side, uh, had a stuck solenoid, so they went ahead and replaced that under warranty for me. So we just got them back here today. Um, super excited to get these back in. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put them back in, try to do some tips, uh, and we'll see how this truck runs. Okay, so I obviously have a jump start here, guys. This is my second time, and they're already opened up and half the job's done, so we just have to get these back together. Um, so if it is your first time, one thing to just tell you is make sure everything stays really, really clean. Um, make sure you get down inside your injector cups. Make sure that they're completely cleaned out so the copper crush washer can seat correctly against the bottom of them. Also, just double check as you're pulling them out. If your cups don't move, you're probably okay. Um, if they do move at all, you need to pull it out and reseat it. All of these came out by hand actually pretty easily. All of the injectors themselves, and I've double checked the cups. Everything seems really flush and tight. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do this job without reseating the cups. Hopefully that won't be an issue long-term. Um, that's kind of a 50-50 split on guys. will tell you either you should do it or just leave them. I've chosen to leave them so far. Uh, seems to be doing just fine. So we can go ahead and get these first injectors prepped and ready to go in. Okay, now to prep the injectors, you've got three things that need to go onto the injector body itself. You've got two different O-rings. One's larger, one is smaller. And then you've got a copper crush washer that'll go on the bottom of the nozzle itself. So on the injector body itself, the smaller O-ring will go on the back of the supply. And the larger one will go actually under this groove here on the body where it mates up with the cup. And the copper crush, crush washer at the end will go onto the nozzle. These ones are already a little bit blackened because they've already been in the truck once. Basically, it will slip down onto the bottom of it there. Now, you want to be careful when you're putting these O-rings on so that you don't twist them or rip them or anything like that. So I like to take just a little bit of white lithium grease and just kind of put just a little bit on here to lubricate that area just to help it slide on just a little bit better. I'm sure everybody has their own kind of methods for this. This is just what I chose to do and it seems to work pretty well last time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. I also like to put some around the bottom of the nozzle because then it'll actually hold that copper crush washer on there for you so that as you put it down into the injector cup, it doesn't fall off. And then you're worried about if you got it seated correctly or not. So you know, don't get it on the nozzle itself, but just put a little bit down there on that face so that it holds that, that copper crush washer in place pretty easily, no big deal. Don't need a lot, just a little bit there. Trying to get, to get it all over my hands. You put just a little bit down here, kind of on the threads and onto that area so that as it kind of slides past, it doesn't get cut or damaged or rolled or anything like that. Not a big deal, uh, but just something to help you out there. So this might be a little bit hard to do in front of the camera. Basically try to roll that O-ring on there, make sure that it's seated and everything's nice. There, it's not rolled over or twisted. Everything looks nice, pretty easy. Flip it over and we'll do the same thing with the larger O-ring. Stick it on there and then just slide it down and it goes into the lower seat right there and make sure just that they're kind of lubricated. It'll help it to seat down into the cup a lot easier um, just to make sure that you don't have any issues with sealing later on. 
Make sure they're both lubed up nicely. And then we'll just put it, go ahead and put this copper crush washer on the end of it as well. Now it'll kind of stick there and it won't fall off. Makes it easy just to insert this guy down into the injector cup. All right, another little tip here, guys, is just a reminder to stay completely organized here. There's probably a lot better ways than this to do it, but this is how I did it. I just got a big piece of cardboard and uh, marked it out into eight different sections um, so that each injector and its parts stay with the same injector. I don't know how important that actually is, but just for my own OCD, I felt like that was a good idea. Um, that way I know that each thing goes back where it came from, um, hold downs and uh, return line bolts and, and everything like that. Um, just word of the wise, just stay as organized as possible, whether you do it with bags or on cardboard or however you want to do it. Just reminder, please stay organized when you do this job. It'll help you out a lot in the long term. Okay, so this injector is ready to go back into the truck. The last thing we need is the hold down bracket that goes with it. So this is number one. I'm going to take the number one hold down. Basically, so this little curve here that goes into it, that should go on top. Just go in here just like this. And you take the hold down bolt with it, and it'll just come down. And you can just bring the whole thing down together, seat it into the cup, and then you can tighten these down. Basically, I'll put the whole bank in, and then I'll torque them all down together at the same time. Make sure we get them all to the right spec. Okay, so getting them in really isn't that bad. You just slide them down, kind of press down on them hard there for a second at the end there, and it kind of pops down into place. Then just thread the bolt in there for the hold down, and we'll torque these down to 37 foot-pounds, and this bank will be ready to go. Okay, so at this point, both banks of injectors are now installed and torqued down, so this is one of the last opportunities that I would have to reset my and check my valve lash. Um, I have already done that in this truck, uh, but this is just one of the last chances that you would have. Now, if you're just doing an injector job, you don't necessarily have to reset the lash or even just to check it, um, but if you're only gonna be in here every 100,000 miles or so, this is a great opportunity to get in here um, and not have to do it again later. So, um, factory spec is 12 thousandths for intake and exhaust. I've already went ahead and installed a set of Wagler Competition push rods in here that when I originally did the injectors, um, and I've rejected them since then as well. So, uh, factory setting is 12 thousandths for intake and exhaust. I set mine to 11, uh, just to be a little bit quieter, but just word for the wise, this is one of your last chances to be able to reset that lash if you were to want to, I would recommend it. Okay, so the last step that we have before we can put the lower valve covers back on is that we have to install the injector return lines. And so those come with new gaskets in your kit. So you put new banjo seals on each one of those, as well as on where it actually goes into the head, right here on the end. And now one other neat thing that I was able to find on Lincoln Diesel's website is the original hold down bolts for these are banjo bolts, excuse me, are Torx head which strip out really easily. I was able to get all of mine out without stripping them, thankfully, but they are kind of on their way out, especially now having done them twice. And Lincoln Diesel actually sells a replacement that is the same length, but it actually comes with a hex head on it, so they're not gonna strip, they'll be a lot easier to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of those, all of the Torx heads with the hex heads, and I'm pretty excited to have those. So there's a banjo seal that goes on each one of these, so the four for the injectors and the one on the head. You put all of those on, they've got these little grooves right here for them to hook into. Kind of hook them in there just like that, if I can do it one-handed. Basically just put that up, put all four of those in there, line it all up, you'll be good to go. The only other thing to note is on this top one, make sure that this seal comes in with a little hook facing the inside so it doesn't come into contact with the lower valve cover when you go ahead and install that. So we'll put this in and torque it down. We'll be ready to put the valve covers on. Okay, so with the injector return lines installed, we are ready to install the lower valve covers. Uh, first things first is just preparation. Make sure that all of these surfaces are cleaned up. All the RTV is taken off them from between the upper and lower valve cover. And then on the bottom side, uh, depending on how they were installed, some people like to put a little bit of RTV in with the rubber gasket here. I actually like to do the same thing. Uh, make sure all that all is completely cleaned out. And the last thing to do is to check on all of these little bosses here. When you flip them over, that is where all of the upper valve cover bolts go into. And if there's any RTV residue that's stuck down inside those holes and you thread the bolt down into it, it can cause them to crack out. This is actually a replacement valve cover because my original one, I'll show it to you here. My original one, you can see in a couple of these places, it's kind of dark, you see these bosses are completely cracked out. There's several of them that are that way. This one's that way as well. 
Um, so I went ahead and found some replacements, some used replacements that were in good shape. So just be very careful with those. Make sure that A, that they're okay. And then B, just take an air hose and a pick and make sure you clean those holes out as well as absolutely possible to make sure that you have a good valve cover to begin with. Okay, like I just mentioned, this is kind of up to you. You don't have to do this, but I like to put just a little bit of silicone in here with it. This is some Molly silicone that comes with the install kit from Lincoln Diesel. Um, so I'm gonna put just a little bit of this here inside this groove, and then we'll go ahead and put the rubber gasket in with it. Okay, now that we have a little bit of silicone in there, put our gasket in. You're looking at this gasket, there's a there's a long lip and there's a real short lip, kind of more of just a face. And on one end, there's one hole that'll go around with a standoff here right in this corner. So we'll go ahead and put that long lip down inside the groove and just work it around, inserting it down inside the groove. And that's it, just make sure that it's firmly seated all the way around. And having that silicone in there just kind of helps stick it down into place. And this guy will be ready to go on. Okay, so here was another opportunity for an upgraded bolt. The OEM ones are once again a Torx, and I don't really like to use those or reuse those too many times. You can strip them out. So ARP has a kit for upper and lower valve cover bolts together that are hex heads. Once again, just harder to strip out and easier to use. So we went ahead and upgraded for both of those. So I've got all of the lower valve cover bolts. So we'll go ahead and get this side installed. So with the lower valve covers on, there's only one step stopping us from putting the upper valve covers on, and that is getting the actual injector harnesses on. They have two mounting holes with bolts that go into them. You only go in one way, obviously, and then just putting the actual leads onto the injectors themselves. Pretty self-explanatory, we'll put that on. The only other thing I'll do is I'll put just a little bit of RTV onto the lower valve cover where it mates up with this little grommet. That way just make sure that seals up well. And we'll do the same thing on the upper valve cover. So we'll put these on. The only word of advice I have is be careful. Do not over tighten these. Uh, They're all very, very small and you can either break them off, break the stud or something like that. And that'll put you back to square one. So with the injector harnesses installed, we can now install our upper valve cover. So we can make sure that the surface is completely cleaned up as before, make sure, uh, meant to make way for more RTV. And so we'll go ahead and just put a bead all the way around here, just kind of this groove that seats all the way along here. So we'll go ahead and just put a bead right along that groove and allow it to squish down as we install the, the uh, valve cover itself. And I'll go ahead and put just a little bit down in these grooves where the injector harness grommets go as well, just to make sure that those seal up. So the last step in this process is to put your high pressure lines back on. Um, if you're going to reuse your lines, make sure that they are professionally clean. Do not try to clean them yourself unless you are a professional. Um, do not try to spray some brake clean through them and expect them to be okay. They will not be. They will run your new injectors. There's a lot of corrosion that generally builds up around the threads um, and that will get reintroduced into the new injectors and run them. So I would just recommend getting brand new ones from, the, from your dealer or from somewhere like Fleece Performance who can provide those for you. That's what these ones are. Um, and I'm, happy to use them. So um, either way, if you're going to use your old ones, make sure they're cleaned well. If not, go ahead and just buy new ones and you should be in good shape. So once those high pressure lines on and you've reconnected your injector harnesses and reconnected your PCV, essentially this job is done. You just have to button up the top of the engine, the wiring harness and getting your piping back on and that kind of stuff, which really doesn't take that long. And luckily I'm behind the camera so I can just do it like this. And that's it. All the lines are back on, coolant's refilled, 
I've actually already cheated and started the truck. Now the startup process can be a little bit of a bear if you don't have a lift pump. You will need to use your primer on your stock fuel filter housing that would normally be sitting right back here um, to be able to prime and get, try to get as much of the air out as absolutely possible or else you won't be able to start it very easily. And even if you do have a lift pump, you're going to have to let it crank for quite a while. So just do it in spurts so you don't overload your solenoid. Um, but it should fire up pretty quickly. So this truck is ready, ready to go back out on the road once I put the tires back on. This job is complete. And that's a wrap guys. Um, really the job is not that bad. It's been about two weeks since I finished the video itself. Um, I really just wanted to make sure that the truck was running well before I finished up the video. Um, you see the truck still has really good street manners. There's almost no smoke at all um, when you're just normal driving, you know, kind of daily drive around town. You're not like you're smoking people out or anything like that, but it obviously does get smoky up on the top end. Um, put down a ton of power and so there's a little bit of extra smoke there and it's probably some tuning could probably help out with that. Um, but overall, I'm really, really happy with it. So. Just a word of the wise guys, just take your time with this job. You know, there's a lot of little parts and a lot of steps, uh, but if you have any kind of mechanical aptitude at all, it's really not that bad. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be scared of it. It's really not too bad, uh, but that's all we have for tonight, guys. Thanks.